Okay, so um, I was saying, so it verifies uh, a codera dimension minus infinity, then the MMP conjecture Okay, I will say something about this later. It implies that Z is birational. <coughs> to uh, pi, so from W to B, which is a, so I will write it as Mori, <coughs> final vibration. Okay, so the condition Fano, okay, I'm just saying that if I look at the uh, omega W, this guy is gonna be um, pi anti-ample. Okay, and the Mori condition is that if I look at the relative Picard rank of W over B, this is minimal, so equal one, okay. So some comments. So the first one is that W can be singular, can be mildly singular. But for the talk, for what I will discuss today, you can think of it as a uh, smooth variety, okay? Um, B, and this is more about notation, okay? So, a Mori Fano aggression with, so relative dimension Two, I will denote it as uh, is a Mori the best of aggression. So we always I will focus on this case in this talk. So let me just fix the notation. Um, the, um, okay, and let me say. If, make a comment about the MMP conjecture. So we'll make maybe a little table here. So if uh, P is zero, if P is positive. So what is known and what is not known, okay. At the moment, so let me say, okay, so here, right, the dimension of W is three. An arbitrary dimension. Okay, so as we saw also in the previous talk, okay, this is so in, um, if the characteristic is zero, this is okay, and this is classical. Okay, I won't write names, but of course this is uh, some kind of very uh, long and interesting story. So of course, Kavamata, Kolar, uh, um, Mori, Reed, Shokurov, okay? So 80s, 90s. Uh, in arbitrary dimension, so okay, if Omega Z is not so effective. So let me mention here BCHM <coughs> and also EDPP, this is 13. Okay, so, um, 
So Birka Kashini Haken McKernan and Buxom de Magi Pound Peternel. And in, characteristic, in positive characteristic, this is okay. Again, if um, omega z is not so defective, and uh, the characteristic is strictly bigger than five. And this is a result of Haken and Shu, very recent result. And let me also mention Birker and Waldron, we work, which also proved um, the work for the case of uh, Mori uh, fan of vibrations. Uh, and this is widely open. The problem, which I will so in positive characteristic, I will address to is um, pathologies. For. More ideal pet, so uh, vibrations over curves. So we are in the three dimensional setting. In a sense, this is justified by uh, so the, the proof of, uh, of minimal models for the three dimensional. Uh, for three-dimensional varieties in positive characteristic. And let me also stress that I will be, will address in particular, so special focus uh, on low characteristic. So what, this is the key word, as I said. Um, and let me make an example to to clarify what I mean with pathology. Okay, the example I have in mind is the one of quasi-elliptic surfaces, okay? <clears throat> so take, let's take P equals three, and I can write an equation Okay, so um, why not x not q? In q cross p two. Okay, and after blow up, blowing up. we obtain a smooth surface S and a vibration. So pi from S to P1. Uh, whose general fiber has a cusp singularity. Okay, so this is the pathology I'm talking about for fibration, okay? This is something which happens already for surfaces, so for these quasi-elliptic surfaces. 
And um, uh, so you have a smooth surface, fibering over a smooth curve, but the general fiber is gonna be singular. Okay. And uh, so you could ask, okay, this is an example in characteristic three. And you could ask, okay, is this like a general phenomenon? And of course, if you look at this equation, you understand that there are two characteristics which are problematic, uh, characteristic three and characteristic two. And actually the theorem, which is classical, the Tate 52, is that quasi-elliptic surfaces all exist. in characteristic P equals two and three, okay? So this is in a sense a bound on the pathology, okay? You bound the characteristic. And, but one other aspect of, of this phenomenon is that once you have a pathology, this produces also other pathologies, other exotic phenomena with respect to characteristic zero. And this is an example, let me write a theorem by Renault. <coughs> 28, in that <clears throat> um, uh, there exist quasi-elliptic <coughs> surfaces which violate a Kodara vanishing theorem. And so you see that there are always, I mean, when one looks at uh, pathologies, one has this double, one can look at um, two things. One is uh, to bound the pathology as much as possible and then trying to exploit the pathologies to produce interesting examples, okay? And um, so what, what I want to um, focus now, so let me maybe right here. It's moved to uh, del pezzo vibration. So let pi be a Mori del pezzo vibration. Over a curve. B. And there is a remark. This is by Collar in 91, in this paper where he classifies all the extremal contraction for smooth threefolds in arbitrary characteristic. And let me quote, okay, what he writes. So, <clears throat> I cannot prove um, that the generic, that, is normal, okay? As you can see, that quasi-elliptic vibration is an example where the generic fiber is non-normal, okay? For curves, it's the same, like normality and smoothness and uh, regularity. Um, okay, so the generic fiber uh, is normal, and he also, um, he also adds that the situation seem fairly complicated if P is two, okay? And so <laughs> a corollary of a theorem which I will, I will write shortly, shortly after, I need some notation for this. This is Stefan. So point A is that the general, so the
is normal. So let's say uh, a yes to the question of collar, okay, for every, po for every characteristic. Well, let me say for every even characteristic zero, okay. Um, and B, if P is two, then actually uh, it's, it's almost a case that we could prove this theorem because if we modify slightly the hypothesis, uh, we find counterexamples. So let me write this. this I, will, I will give a precise statement, but um, so let me say that the Mori condition is essential. Okay, so the Mori condition is that the relative Picard rank of the vibration is minimal. Okay. Uh, okay, the comment here is that we need to look at the generic fiber of this vibration. So this is we can reduce this problem to existence of certain del pezzo surfaces, in particular. This is a question on the pezzo surfaces over imperfect fields. Okay, let me move to the other side <laughs> um, to talk about the pezzo surfaces over imperfect fields. So, okay. Right, so uh, some notation first. So F is going to be a field, arbitrary field of arbitrary characteristic. <clears throat> and let me give you the definition of the pezzo surface in this setting. So a proper regular to, uh, so um, F surface V is del pezzo if omega V is anti-ample. All right, so uh, let me stress the assumption on regularity, okay? It's gonna be clear why I need this. Uh, let me give some examples. So, A, assume that F is K algebraically closed. Then, the pezzo surfaces are so P2, FP1 cross P1, and the blow up of P2 in up to eight points. They're all points. Okay. The second example, let me uh, add some, something else. So I want to sh give you a further example. So let's take uh, F to be K of P1. So with k, uh, as usual, k algebraically close, 
and um, uh, let me say characteristic of k is zero. Okay. So if I take um, w to be an element in the linear system O p1 cross p3 of degree one in p1 and two in p3, say general element. Then uh, we obtain pi from w to p1, and we can look at uh, v, the generic fiber of this pi, so uh, w f, and we know one can show that this rank is one, but clearly if we take v tensor with the closure of f, then this guy becomes p1 cross p1 over f bar. So this is an example which is not in the list. I'm just uh, giving you an example over a perfect field in this case, okay, because I assume characteristic zero, and another del pezzo surface, okay, with my definition. Okay. And uh, okay, let, let me add here a definition. So about, let's move to imperfect fields. And what I need here is to measure the imperfection of a field. It's gonna be useful for what I will say afterwards. So take F and take inside a perfect closure. <coughs> this is a perfect closure. And consider the P roots. So it's just the element alpha in f perf such that alpha p is in f. So if I look at the field extension or f, this is gonna be a cardinality p power e. Okay, could be also infinite, of course, but so let me say that if finite, then this is by definition the p degree of f, or if you prefer, the degree of imperfection. Okay. I'm gonna give some examples here. Examples. Let's start with easy. Uh, easy case. So if f is perfect, then I'll leave the p degree zero. Let's take the classical example of non perfect field, which is the function field over fp. This is imperfect of p degree one. More generally than this, if <clears throat> f, let me write it like this, so bk, so bk is gonna be a perfect field, okay, or b, so the function field of, with b, uh, um, a k variety of dimension n, then the p degree is going to be n. Uh, k, uh, I should say, perfect. Okay. Okay. So as you see, uh, if I work looking at the original problem I, was, I started with, what we're looking at is the petzo surfaces over fields of p degree one, okay? Because I'm working over, over curves. 
an important remark, which is something which I implicitly already showed you. Oh, sorry. Is that over imperfect fields, so smooth. So smooth is not equivalent to regular. And an example of this is exactly the quasi-elliptic vibration I showed you before. So if we look at the generic fiber of a quasi-elliptic surface, this is gonna be a curve defined over an, imp over an imperfect field. And uh, so the local rings are uh, regular, but of course if you take the um, the perfect closure of the field and you base change, you, you obtain a cusp. Okay. Right. Good. So now I can uh, state the theorem. I will divide in part A and B. Okay, so um, let uh, so let D over F be a del pezzo surface and assume that the P degree of F almost one and assume the Mori condition that the Bicard rank of the of V is one, is minimal. And then what I'm saying, what we prove is that V is geometrically normal. And this gives exactly uh, the theorem of the answer to the question of Collar. But you could, this is for every P. Hmm? Okay, B is that if P is two, then there exists, so let me call, me, call them V prime, V double prime, the pets of surfaces, the P degree, uh, so over F of course, with P degree of F equal one, such that, so, Rho of V prime is two, and V prime is geometrically non-normal. And Rho of V double prime is one, and V is not smooth. V prime, double prime, sorry, is non-smooth. So let me put this second one in parentheses because uh, this was known, at, at least Collar knew this example, okay? Um, so you see, as, as soon as you remove one hypothesis, you lose the theorem, okay? So if the Picard rank is two, then you get something which is geometrically not normal. And so you can construct uh, del pezzo, no more del pezzo vibration um, with uh, geometrically non normal uh, generic fiber. And the second one is saying, okay, maybe we can ask less. So we just, of course, the generic fiber is gonna be uh, geometrically normal, but there exists contact example where it's geometrically non regular, if you want, okay? So it's quite, quite a sharp statement. Okay. <clears throat> Good. So uh, what I will do now, maybe I will start from here, okay? So three is a toy proof of theorem one. Theorem A, sorry. 
Okay, so seeking, we seek for a contradiction, okay? We take V over F, geometrically integral. It's not clear that we can assume this, but trust me, we can, actually. But geometrically non-normal. Okay, and now, we, base, we change base and normalize. <coughs> okay, what do I mean? Okay, let me start from here. So I have V over F, my del pezzo, okay? Which is geometrically non normal. I base change with, uh, so let me take at the perfect closure, let me call it big K, okay? I base change on this, and I take, so over F. So now I have a surface of a perfect field, so the non-smoothness appears, because smoothness and regularity is the same over a perfect field. So this is not normal because I assume that to be not normal. So let me call this Y, and I normalize it. This is C, this is R. This is the conductor of the normalization. And this is the ramification. Okay. Let me write it like this because I will refer to this in what follows. It doesn't work together, okay. So there are three main ingredients which we need in the proof. Okay, so the first one is the global analysis. the normalization square, okay? And here there is a result by Reed, which is the classification of a normal del pezzo. <laughs> over an algebraically closed field, okay? So we need to adapt this a little, but the point is that from this classification, we can deduce a classification of the pairs X, R, R, <laughs> So the ramification, okay? So the, the normalization and the ramification, which is just a list, okay? So it's a finite list. We have P2 with a line, we have P2 with a conic, 
and so on. I won't write all the, the, the cases. Anyway, the ambient space X is gonna be either P2 or a Hilzebrook surface or um, a weighted projective space, okay? The second ingredient is the local analysis. And here's where the Gorenstein condition appears. So go on. Um, so I won't say, this, this is the technical core of the whole paper. Let me say that, uh, in a sense, we use this uh, to bound the characteristic. And here we really use the fact that uh, the surface V is Gorenstein. Okay, this is, the, this is a very long story. Also, Miles Reed in his paper, he discussed this quite a bit. The, the, what I'm saying is that with the Gorenstein condition, what we have is that if we take an irreducible com component of uh, the ramification and we compare it with uh, uh, the image in the conductor, so the length upstairs is double at the generic point of this irreducible component. This is the, uh, this is, and let me also, um, so you can also say this is a work by um, um, Patak Falvi <laughs> and Waldron. Um, so they use different methods, okay, compared to us. Yeah, this was uh, quite interesting. I was visiting Jolt, Patek Falvi in Lausanne, and he asked me after my talk, oh, what, are you, what is the problem you are working on? I said, the test of fibrations in positive characteristics. Oh, me too. It was a moment, it was, <laughs> it was not easy. But okay, um, so they can prove some uh, results in our same direction, but they cannot deal with uh, low characteristic. So, and our methods are completely different, okay? And the third one, which is really, the, I think, the, the key idea of this whole project, I think, is the, the bounds on the embedding donation. And for this, I need some notation. So, definition. Take D, an irreducible scheme, and take its generic, its generic point. So this is over F. We define the embedding dimension of, of D over F. Let me write the definition and I explain. So the or K of A, cup of A of M A square with A Okay. So I localize at the generic point and I look at the dimension of I tensor over F with the perfect closure and I measure this this dimension here. So this is telling you how much the, the, the scheme D is not reduced, is geometrically not reduced, okay? So, um, the remark is that, so assume that D has with no embedding component. <laughs> then D is geometrically reduced if and only if this embedding dimension is zero. So 
you see there are two ways which can make this uh, embedding dimension positive. Either the, the scheme we started with is already not reduced, that's an option, or maybe it is reduced, but when we base change to its perfect closure, we get something which is not reduced, okay? And now the question is what, when, why this definition? We are talking about geometric normality and not about geometric reducedness. So the thing is that we want to apply this to a, a curve inside our del pezzo surface. And there is one curve which is very special inside our regular but non smooth uh, del pezzo surface. It's the divisorial part of the locus of non smoothness. So the idea. Um, look at. Uh, D inside singularity of the singular locus, the, the non smooth locus of V over F, the divisorial part of the locus non smoothness. And the proposition we proved with Stefan is the following, which is what? So the idea is the following. If you have something which is, start with something which is reduced. If it's over a perfect field, then that's never gonna be positive, that embedding dimension. If you work over a, an imperfect field, is there a bound which comes from the field over that, on that number? The answer is yes. So it, this is exactly the pedigree. So the statement is the following. So take D, um, a proper uh, variety. Okay, when I say variety, when I say scheme, it's algebraic. When I say variety, I mean integral scheme. Okay, so it reduces and reduced. Okay. Um, variety over F. Uh, with p degree of f equal one, then the embedding dimension of d over f is bounded by one. Okay, which is exactly the p degree. Good. And now I do the toy proof. No. Yes. So first, assume that the ramification is a line inside P2, okay? You have just to go through all the possible cases in the miles Reed classification of non-normal del pezzos, okay? Which is there. So let's start with the easy case. And uh, so the second part of this, uh, technical part of our work implies that the characteristic must be two. And if you look at the, the normalization restricted to the ramification, this is from P1 to P1, and this is the, the relative Frobenius. Okay, and now look at the normalization square, uh, uh, okay, locally. Okay, so I take, now look at the level of rings. So I have K, K is my perfect closure, okay? Here I have K of V, and here I have the embedding of the line inside P2. Okay? Look at the, where is this? It's there, okay? So I'm now doing 
looking at the rings, okay? This is the, as I said, Frobenius. So this is the square. Cartesic is two. So the square is Cartesian, co-Cartesian, so I can construct this. I can deduce this. Um, and this is, uh, let me write it this way. Okay. This is just a push out, okay? Nothing. I, I, I'm going a little fast, but. Okay, so now look at D, the divisorial part of the locus omnum smoothness, and base change it. Who is this guy? So this guy, look at, look at it locally. It's gonna be the spec of, of what? So this ring, this is the locus of no smooth, and this is just, you have to look at derivatives, okay? This is where you can really do the, compute the derivatives to deduce the, the structure of D. And trust me that if you, okay, if you derive this, so it's 2A, 0, but 2 is, we're in characteristic 2, so 0, 0 remains C, so the, the locus, the locus, locus of non smoothness is, uh, is this. Okay. Just doing derivatives, okay? <laughs> and, but now look at the embedding dimension of this. This is two. But the proposition shows that this should be smaller or equal than one. Contradiction. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm cheating a little bit, but my time is up, because uh, I should prove that, first I should prove that D is non-reduced. So it could be that this non-reducedness comes from the fact that D in V is non-reduced. And then I couldn't apply my proposition, which where D is assumed to be a variety, so in particular reduced. And moreover, so this is a very easy case, and what, what we do is basically uh, looking at Matt Reed list and going through like doing this case by case analysis. And what is interesting, I think, is that we basically, like counterexamples, they, they just appears. Because we really go through the, the, through the cases and we look for a contradiction. And at the same time, we got many, many ideas how to produce counterexamples. So those examples there in the part B of the theorem. And so in a sense, what I want to stress is that this approach is very, very explicit and we really work out um, examples. And my time is up, so I thank you for your attention. <laughs>